um, how know when you are a professional? I mean, when you have a good uh, process or what reveals you that you are actually prepared for work? Um, when you start getting jobs, I guess. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the, the, the problem with the question is wrapped around this idea that like, <laughs> you just know, right? Like, it's not like, like that didn't happen to me, for instance. It wasn't like, all right, I did X amount of work. Now I'm a professional. <laughs> you know what I mean? That never yeah. happened for me. Like, I was never, like, I don't think I even realized I was a professional until perhaps when I first got my, my first real job working for Sony. Uh, but that was already three years in. I was already doing work. It, was like, it wasn't that I wasn't doing anything before Sony. I, I just wasn't doing anything. Um, like when other, when Sony took me seriously as an artist, that's when I realized that maybe I am an artist, you know? <laughs> but I still didn't think that I was, like I felt like a fraud a little bit too. I thought I didn't really belong, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but I did fine. I did okay. And then... You know, even when working at Blizzard, I was just kind of like, huh, I think now I'm a professional. I think now I can say that I'm a good artist. Like, only then, I think, is when I started to claim that I was actually a good artist. You know, before that, I was just pretty um, humble about it and really kind of just, now I'm still working at it. But then I was like, no, nah, I think I think I'm now a good artist, <laughs> you know. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't like I just sat there and said, like, all right, I reached good artist status. It's just like, no, like, I'm pretty confident in my skills. Like, I'm pretty consistent with what, like, tasks is given to me. I can kind of achieve, you know? Like, okay. I, th I, th I think I'm good. Like, I'm a good artist. You know, I think I could do the work. And that's kind of the, the point I'm trying to make with all that, right? It's not like, um, it's not like this, this moment that you'll have where you're just like, all right, I've done it. I think just worry about keep making good art and get better and better. I think that's what makes you a professional. So with that being said, you're already a professional Christian. You're already there. Okay. You just you just haven't been recognized enough or someone hasn't picked you up. That's the only difference. Like you're totally capable of doing work. You just need to find it. Yeah. And start publishing things and stuff. Yeah, it's it's not that part is equally as difficult and people don't take it that part as much as seriously as much as they should, but it's just as hard. Okay, thanks. Okay. Yeah, and then I think Jason had a question about ratios. What's the ratio of line work oriented designers versus painters? I'll say it's half and half. I think in the game industry, for instance, there's mostly painters. But then if you look at other industries, like other artistic industries, like architecture or industrial design or trans design, um, a lot of people still draw with lines. So you just got to know where you, you fit. I think in our industry, though, for sure, more painters, or at least people who who use something alternative, something that's alternative to just line art. I've got a question, AJ. Cool. Or Collins, I don't know. Oh, what? Did Colin ask a question? Um, Oh, I have a question. Well, yeah, um... Oh, I see. Yeah, maybe we should let Colin go. He did call dibs. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Colin. <laughs> How dare you take Colin's question, even though you're the one that brought it <laughs> is, to my attention. <laughs> is yours, uh, yours quick? Because you could go first if it's quick. Because, I don't know, he might have a really detailed answer for me. No, well, what I was going to ask is, when you first starting to freelance, how much do you think you should start? at i know you know the quality of it or oh know. thirty dollars an hour is what i think is a good minimum for anybody even the most amateur of artists would yeah. you say would you say half front and half at the end most of the time uh just get a contract if that's how you roll then that's put that in the contract if you'll get paid every two weeks then that's better be in the contract if you get paid at the end of the month it's a, better be in the contract. Just gotcha. make sure okay. you get paid, and it's in writing, and mm. you both sign so that way you can sue to get that money yeah. back. I have had students and friends who reach out to me and say, like, I had this, I worked for this company, and 
they're not paying me. What, what do I do? And I was like, Is it, was it in writing? Did you ever set the contract? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, just keep pestering them. Then. That's all you can do. You know, just keep fucking yeah. pestering them. But uh, I was like, because next time get a contract. So that way uh, they're legally bounded to pay you. And if they don't fall through, you can, you can sue them. And it's like, and suing sounds like a terrible thing. It seems like, like a big, it's like a really legal, big legal thing to do. But no, that's just, this is how it works. You know, um, you sue them no more than just how much you were demanding. And uh, it shouldn't be valid. Like people shouldn't be like, what? You sued me for not paying you? And all you're asking for is the amount that I owe you, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't think there's going to be an uproar for that. If you like sue them for like 10 times what you were asking for, then that's a little bit different. Even if you could probably win the case, it's probably best not to do that just because you don't want to be that guy that seems like they're money hungry. You want to be the guy uh, or gal that just wants to get paid on time. And that's completely rational. I, I personally have not sued anybody, but I know people who have, and it's always worked out for them. You're, if it's in writing, you're, you're going to always win. All right. I think that's, that's a good question. Yeah, no problem, brother. No problem, brother. Go ahead, Colin. Ask your question. All right. So um, one of the things that kind of gets me excited about being able to work in this field one day is um, I see like a lot of artists that get jobs in like different countries, different cities, get to travel and, uh, you know, see a bit of the world. And I was wondering if you like you have any uh, like insight into the whole like relocation to work at a you know, studio or like if you've done that or you know anything about how that works for artists who do that yeah usually relocation they'll handle all the stuff for you it's pretty simple at least the better companies will they'll spend the money and time to fly you out for a uh, uh, in-person interview they'll have the time and money to bring you out to also just uh, educate you on the place where you're going to be uh, they usually will help you find a place too if they're again a good studio um, but aside from that, uh, it's pretty straightforward, you know? Uh, so then the question really more is more wrapped around, are you good enough to even be approached? That's always comes down to it. But like, yeah, in my experience, I've never re had to relocate for a job, uh, mostly by choice. It's not that I was never approached by international jobs. I just didn't take them. Uh, there was one time where I could have moved to Spain, but I didn't. There was another time where I could have relocated to Scotland, but I didn't. And so, and in, and in both cases, too, something else came up. For instance, the Scotland thing, uh, I got an opportunity uh, here at home. So I was like, I'm just going to do that. I like living in California. And then this, this uh, not Scotland, I already said the Scotland. The Spain thing, um, or maybe it was the opposite. Maybe it was the, the other way around. I forget exactly. But... Uh, again, another opportunity, and I think that that one was Sony. And so I turned that one down as well. So. What is going on in the background there? <laughs> my kid's playing. <laughs> yeah. So, like, um, have you known anybody who have, like, run into any, like, problems with that anything unexpected oh yeah i have actually i i know some people some artists who got kind of screwed up so yeah so you have to double check usually basically what happens they they did that they left everything behind and then when they moved out there like the person didn't really take care of them and this wasn't necessarily a big studio this was like another artist doing it to other artists so it's kind of sketch um and so i always say just do a little bit more research always you know, always be considering, you know, alternatives. Uh, but in most cases that I've seen friends travel or relocate, um, it's it's pretty good. Like the the story that I'm referring to was someone that was like I know them well, but I'm, they're not like we're not really really close or anything. I just know them because 
we share a mutual love for being concept artists, you know, and we just talk every so often. Right. So you were talking about um, being good enough to get that, like, mm -hmm. so are, are you kind of saying it's like more like once you're at the top of the industry, that's the kind of opportunity you get? Most likely, yeah, because um, not always, because I wasn't the best in either of those instances that I told you, right? But in one of the instances, I was good enough to get an opportunity at Sony. So that does say something about where I was at at that time, you know? That I was approached by Scotland and then also Sony at the same time. Does it make sense? Yeah. And so, uh, but I wasn't near nearly as good as I am now, right? But uh, I was good enough. That's why I say you have to be good enough. Because think about it. They have to pay for you to fly out there. They have to pay for you to have living space. You know, they have to pay for your documentation, potentially your work visa, all that stuff. You know, a pretty big investment. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's like they're not going to hire just a junior art level artist. They're going to look locally for that, right? Like at least if they're a smart studio, they're going to do that. <laughs> you know, um, but you know things have changed. I think more and more people are working remotely these days because it's possible, right? I even told myself that if I start developing this game uh, stuff that I'm doing already and I build a big reputation for it and I start building and expanding. Uh, I have no problems with letting people stay remotely where they're at and uh, just try to build a workflow that works with that kind of circumstance. Hmm. You know? So, like, probably at, a, at like, my level, like, it would be pretty pointless to even apply for a job. But is no, you should always or... try. You should always try. I'm just saying don't be disappointed Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> you can always try because there could be an off chance that they do generally want your skill set. Because you got to remember, just because you, maybe you're not like an excellent painter doesn't mean that they don't like your designs. So I always say, like, focus on that because that's usually what gets people to turn their heads in the first place. And then what gets them to, to look like dramatically at what you're doing is if it's like really good. You know, and then they like the good makes them like say, "Whoa, this is this is really outstandingly, uh, outstandingly painted." And then they're like, "But it's also like just a really cool concept," which I'm a, more of a big fan of. I'm a big fan of people doing cool concepts and just um, really nicely rendered stuff. Yeah, because a lot of the time, like. The stuff you're doing is just going to be made into a 3D model and wouldn't have really mattered if uh, how well rendered it was, mm -hmm. unless they're going to put it in an art book, right? Nah, the there's an argument against that, but you're right. Like it all, it all depends on the context of the studio. But uh, the reason why you do want to render stuff and have that quality is it lets people who know nothing about you discover you much easier. But also, it's a good skill set to have because when you're working in the studio. You have to send like a fully rendered thing sometimes to somebody who has no clue or a new direct communication to you, and they have to make that thing. So if you don't have enough information in your concept, you know, there's going to be a lot of back and forth. I've seen this personally happen in my own work. Hmm. So where like I would pass something on that wasn't, it was half-assed by me, and then like just constant mistakes <laughs> on the modeler's end, but it's not entirely their fault. And so that's why I encourage you guys to build that range. Having the ability to render and paint well allows you to, to accomplish quite more. All right. Does that help you out, brother? Oh, yeah, yeah. Butter? What the heck is that yeah. a cat? Well, let somebody else have their turn. <laughs> yeah, like, had to, he, he's very talkative. <laughs> Kill it. Kill it. <laughs> Any other questions? Hey, can I? Well, no, nah, you can't. Anyone else? <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm not taking it seriously. Uh, 
uh, one is uh, for, for further assignments. I, I haven't watched all your videos yet, but maybe you answered that one. How would one go about now at this point that I'm in? At, uh, uh, you take one concept, you enlarge the resolution and try, start detailing uh, how much would, how, how big of a file would that be? And, uh, yeah, usually at least 3,000, if it's a portrait, like what I'm working at, like 3,000, 6,000 is a good resolution for a full character. Mm -hmm. right, like this is not a full character. I think this is like a bust. And so it's fine that it's, um, you know, at this scale. But if I wanted to like, like do more of a full body, then instead of shrinking him, I would increase the canvas. Mm -hmm. See, and uh, I kind of will do that now. You know? And then that's cool. that way it's still higher resolution. And how how uh, how does the I'm not familiar with the process. How does it go that the, someone asks you to build a character and, and mm -hmm. then it takes like a month or so you said for some artists to develop one character? Yeah. So in the industry, um, it just depends on who you're working with. Sometimes your your boss. We'll see one of your concepts and your sketches and just be like, that's it. We're done. And that rarely happens. But when it does, you're just like, what? Okay. And then uh, there's other instances, which is more likely to happen, where they just keep on having you iterate. So that's why getting you guys used to iteration is just kind of the, the goal here. Like, you need to be able to constantly be changing your designs, you know? And because uh, that's the most practical skill you'll need to have um, but then you also have to be able to take those those iterations and designs to the point where they actually make sense uh, so you'll do the the front the top the afterwards if it's yes the model or, yes yeah. sir yeah you're already on top of it yeah that's pretty much standard is this this um like you got to make it so that someone else can can make it, and if you don't have that, then yeah, you're going to be really screwing up <laughs> the pipeline a bit. See, the thing about it, like our job as concept artists, you know, is to make it easier for the rest of the pipeline to visualize the, the results. Mm -hmm. You understand? And so, if we don't do a good job of that, then you know, there's going to be a hard time ahead of people who are going to be after us. So that's why we have to do our best to convey concepts and ideas to them much sooner than later. Yeah. I have I have a, a, this... Uh, did, did you watch The Human Centipede? <laughs> yeah. I haven't watched <laughs> it, but I know a lot about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah I have the poster because I'm uh, rendering and compositing things here at our firm <laughs> and I'm the one at the end <laughs> yeah. all the crap. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. <laughs> cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's that's uh that's like remember like our job is like to create the blueprints, you know? We're like mm -hmm. we're like um part of the architectural team in terms of the project. And so you need to be able to convey um, ideas that are going to be helpful to the rest of the team. And also inspiring. I think that's another thing that people don't realize. Like, you got to be able to get people riled up about your designs. So, anyway. Cool. Yeah, you're, Thanks. You're cool. So... Again, like I said before, like, you know, we're on the home stretch, so really try your guys' best to make these designs the best possible designs you can potentially make uh, in the time that you have. I know it's asking a lot, but this is kind of um, the most valued part of the whole um, refining stage. It's just, just sitting down and just grinding it through. To me, I still think the best, the most valuable time spent is just iteration and iterating and iterating and iterating. But... Um, you know, at some point you still have to finish the painting. So don't fall in love with that romantic aspect of concept art, which is just constantly designing stuff.
Like you'll have to move on eventually. So any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, when we're like trying to do this by ourselves after the mentorship, if we want to build portfolio pieces and stuff like that, um, should we spend about this amount of time that we spent here iterating before we like go deep into like finishing the crisis? Yeah, iteration is like hands down. Like I said, the majority of your time would be spent on. Okay. Okay. Like it just like in the real world, you'll actually spend more time iterating. But here's the catch. Your iterations will need to be super rendered and finalized. Oh, like yeah. in the iteration stage. That's why I'm like trying to get you guys to practice just clarification. And also practice just finish paintings in general. Like it's not like your your boss will sit there and say, all right, now just really render this out. It's actually the opposite. They actually would hopefully expect it to be rendered by the time you submit it. You know? The iterations be like kind of not even your thumbnails, right? Like it, it should just already be ready to go. But yeah. Um, I know a lot of you guys will have a hard time accomplishing that task. So the tools that I've given you are actually training you to get better at that, which is submitting much more clear designs at a much earlier st time versus like later on, you know, um, being really good at iterating quickly, knowing that you can get more done with less time, stuff like that, because it'll make you and prepare you to become that much more of a badass. You understand? I mean, if this piece you're doing now has been really quick. Um, would this be like uh Yeah, so this, thumbnail? yeah, this is be like my thumbnail. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. So you see like this, this, the scale of difference between your guys' thumbnails and my thumbnails is very obvious, right? So that's a great observation. Like, but that's my point. It's unrealistic for me to like, if you guys don't draw just as, as good with every thumbnail, <laughs> you'll never make it. Because I was never that good either, you know, but I still made it. Um, but I made it because of I did like the stuff that I'm teaching you guys. I did stuff that taught me how to get better at iterating, taught me how to get better at painting. That's why I say thumbnails should be clear. So if that's all you can give to your art director, at least they can get a good sense of where you're going. And that's why I say your iterations should be rendered at some level, right? Because you've, you've done at least a lot of the heavy lifting with the thumbnails, which is design. Now you just got to like refine the design and make it clear like where we now know that's a belt buckle or whatever. And if you just keep practicing this and you also, you finish paintings, that's also another key because finishing paintings will teach you what you did wrong in the beginning. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier to, to blush. Right. And so like you have to, to take that same insight and say, okay, well, you know, in time, my thumbnails will look more realistic or more finished because I just will be practicing. Um, a lot, you know, and I'll be training a lot. And uh, I always say, you know, um, your fastest, don't compare your, your best time with someone else's best time because it's not realistic because there's, there is people that have different paces and different amount of training and experience than you did. And that's it, like, it's not fair. Like you to compare yourself to me now is unfair because I have a head start on you, you know? Let's see where you're at 10 years from now, right? And if you did not get any better than me where I was today, then what are you doing all those 10 years, right? Yep. Um, but I assure you that won't happen, <laughs> okay? I promise you if, you, if you keep at it, and this is true for everyone, if you guys keep at it continuously and constantly, um, you should surpass me in every single conceivable way. Um, but here's the thing. I'm still a young guy, so <laughs> I'll still be moving too, yo. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so we'll see where I'm at in 10 years, especially if I keep painting, right? And so, um, yeah, this, it's a saying by uh, Leonardo da Vinci. is like, poor is the pupil who does not surpass his master. Meaning I feel bad for the student who doesn't become better than their teacher. And I agree with that sentiment. Like, I'm teaching you what I didn't get to learn when I was at your level, right? I had to learn all of this, most of this on my own, right? Uh, I had to like f seek it out. There was not a mentorship that I could just take of one single person for like a month that, you know, that didn't exist for me at least, 
right? And if I didn't want, if I wanted to take classes from super epic teachers, it costed like an arm and a leg, and I had to drive, you know, and that was very difficult for me at the time, especially because I'm children, you know, and so, or I'm sorry, not children. I was just having a relationship with my uh, girlfriend, and at the, now girlfriend at the time, now wife. And I remember it was really rough, and so. And that was the only alternative. You guys can do it in your pajamas now. <laughs> right? You guys can all literally be in your pajamas as we speak, eating some popcorn. Like it's it's become much yeah, more accessible. Yeah. <laughs> it's just way more accessible to get this type of education is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Right. And so um a lot of what I had to do, yeah, I just had to really just kind of grind it out. I would and I didn't have a lot of money either at the time. So I had to like just rely on resources outside of um just taking classes it was it's like i love i love this whole idea of like back in my day kind of mentality because it's totally what it sounds like back in my day we didn't have youtube and the internet like we did it yeah, <laughs> i'm a little older um yeah so so you probably get it this, yeah i was having this conversation with uh my cousin who's trying to get in now to the school and he was asking me all these questions. I'm like, well, you don't, you don't understand. We didn't have, like, you know, image search engines that were that good. We didn't have <laughs> Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny that we're not old? Like, that's what yeah. old people say to people. And, and it makes sense, right? Because it's usually, like, a few decades or several decades that they're talking about, right? Like, you know, when, when my dad talks to me, like, he's got, like, you know, three or four decades on me on mm -hmm. what he's talking about. And when he talks to me about it now, it's just... It's um, it's funny, right? It's just like, yeah, that's kind of crazy that you had to deal with that. But it's like for us, it's like, what is that? Like, what you're saying to your cousin is like not even 15 years ago, I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I mean, YouTube is barely like YouTube um, started right around when I started to become an artist. Mm -hmm. So that's so I'm pretty clear on how old it is. It's about 11 years old. That's like nothing, man. That's so crazy. That it's so goddamn young. Google, same thing, right? Like Google is also relatively young. And so, yeah, your your cousin is a is a dummy. And so, <laughs> <laughs> tell him I said of that to him. Um, and and tell him that if he really wants to know how to be ahead of the the curve. This is, and this is something that I tell my students too. I think I've told you guys, and I want to remind you if you forgot. Um, the thing that I tell students and like I tell my sons, my teenage boys, um, I tell them, you know, the, the number one resource that your generation uh, will benefit from the most um, is focus. Mm -hmm. Because you guys will have an ungodly amount of resources at your disposal. You can pick from hundreds of different softwares to, to paint with, like literally hundreds, I think, <laughs> you know? Um, and they're all viable. I mean, definitely there's tens, there's dozens of different softwares to paint with, and they're all, all valid. They have valid arguments for each, you know? And so the question I have then for this person, right, is can you just pick one and just get over yourself, <laughs> okay? Because, and that's not necessarily just true for your, your cousin, but it's also true for our generation, mm -hmm. right? But I'm just saying it's more, it's going to be more uh, uh, of a resource for your cousin and his generation, right? I'm not sure how old he is, but like anyone that's like in their teens still, like that yeah. that's what i'm talking to, referring to mm -hmm. um but it's also true for our generation it's just i think it started with our generation like this gradual change began with the millennials that we had more access to information because there's more people that are in college than there ever were before mm -hmm. um, there's more people that have access to the internet than there was ever before it's just that like my kids for instance my daughter and my son who are just still babies like they like walk up to a TV 
and they start to touch it and try to make it do stuff and it doesn't do it and they're right why is it why can't i touch my tv yet you know like they're gonna grow up like with this idea that everything is touch screen you know and i'm gonna be like yeah there was a time where like literally touch screen was not even a thing like i had to really like call people using a phone that was like in, in tied to a pole in the middle of the street like i had to call uh, a number that would then connect me to my mom right i couldn't even directly call my mom i had to call a 1-800 collect number and i would type that in and then they would ask you your name and then instead of saying my name i'd say mom come pick me me up (laughs) and they would send that to my mom and my mom would just come pick me up so we didn't get charged. Without GPS to find you? Yeah, and, and she would have to know what I meant because there was no maps for her. To, she would have to actually know where the school was. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it's crazy to think that that was just fucking 15 years ago. <laughs> right? Or like not even 15, a little more like 16 or 17 years ago that I had to do something like that. I remember when I was in high school too, like my friend had a pager and and I was contrarian at the time. It was mostly I would always contradict people all the time, or try to. I'll be like this, that the stupid kid is like, well, did you know? Um, I I still have a little bit of me, but mostly it's gone because I realize it's, nobody likes that. Um, yeah, he, he had a pager, and I was just like, it's, it's probably jealousy and security really that driven driven me to be such a dick. But like. Uh, yeah. Uh, he's like, yeah, dude, I got this pager. My mom got me this pager and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't want a pager, dude. Like, I want to be able to be contacted at any time. Like, that's crazy, yeah. man. <laughs> I want my privacy, bro. And then, like, I just think back to how stupid that sounds now. <laughs> like, what an idiot. I was such no, an I thought, idiot. I thought the iPhone was a waste of money. Like, why would you need internet on your phone? You have it on the computer. Uh, you're an idiot too. Yeah. Yep. You're so stupid. <laughs> What were you thinking? And so, <laughs> and so I've I've gotten wiser to that. I I now am skeptical of skeptics, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I've learned I've learned a, a really valuable. And it's funny. I did that last night. Actually, I was talking to the, these guys, and they're like, you know, back in the golden age of modding, you know, this modding is so different these days. And I looked at them and I kind of laughed. And I was like, listen, you're doing the back in my day thing, and let me just tell you, historically speaking, that's always wrong (laughs) you know it's always wrong you have to understand that and i was like like maybe you're right maybe it's different maybe it is worse but just in general it will get better again it's just better it's like so it's like so your problem was that people don't mod anymore i was like but that's probably because people are just making games now because they can because unity is free uh unreal is free i think cryengine is even affordable you know, source, Valve source is free. <laughs> it's like, this is people don't need a fucking mod anymore. They don't have to rely on some sort of uh, arbitrary um, um, map editor, right? That the de- developers just decided to let people have access to, you know? But like you had your constraint with the tools um, that the editor had, right? For instance, uh, it's like if I have Unreal and I, I can only use the Unreal 4 game assets, you know? I was like, no, it's it's an actual full-on engine where I can put my own assets and animations and whatever, right? Um, it's not like StarCraft 2 map editor where I can only use the Marines to, as characters and I can just kind of bow some of that. Like um, League of Legends was a completely built off of a mod, right? And I was yeah. like, yeah, I was like, what about League of Legends? He's like, well, that was during the Golden Age. I was like, okay. What about DayZ? What about uh, Player un- Players Unknown? And he's like, oh, yeah, I think you got a good point. I was like, I think, yeah, you don't be so old man already, right? Just always realize that you might actually be fucking wrong <laughs> every single time, especially with that stuff. So, like, uh, yeah, you know, I'm like right now um, – yeah, I, I'm paying attention to what is the most valuable resource for the next generation, and it's it's definitely going to be that. And let me be clear too, it's not that um, 
that it's anything new. I actually encourage you guys to stay focused in general. Like that's always just been a general rule of excellence. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not that it's like, it's only going to be uniquely true for this uh, next generation and ours. It's just that it's going to be compounded is all right. Uh, because uh, when I went to school, um, since we had limited resources, it was easier to stay focused. You understand? Yeah. Like ZBrush was like the only 3D sculpting tool available. So like I needed to learn 3D sculpting in ZBrush. And that's the end of the story, you know? Yep. And so <clears throat> uh, that's what I'd tell you, you to tell your cousin. Tell him he's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then he needs to focus. And then that will that will bring him great wealth in his life. Yeah, I will agree to that. <laughs> yeah, and you take that advice as well, as well as everyone else in the class. It's, it's super helpful. And you hear me? Uh, yeah. What's up? Hello. Hey, Anthony. Um, on the whole topic of focus. Yeah. I, before I took your mentorship, mm -hmm. I would 100% say that I would be an environment artist as, a, as my career. Got it. But I guess through the past weeks, I'm starting to have second thoughts about that. <laughs> sure. I don't know what to do, if I should continue or if I should uh, switch. Well, uh, the question really is simple. Which one do you prefer? I don't really know. I'm not sure. Just really think about it then. You don't have to answer it right now. Um, that's something that I can't answer for you, but you, you just got to, like, I can give you some insight on that, right? Like, so just pick a, pick a lane, you know, and understand that you can always go into the other lanes. There's not, there's no wall, okay? <clears throat> but when you stay there, um, try to be excellent at it. And then when you decide to come transfer over, um, you'll become a little more educated, right? Like, for instance, I can be an environment artist. It's not too late for me, <laughs> you know, not at all. I can, you know, slowly but surely start putting ca character and concept art aside and start doing environment concept art, you know? And if I do this for the next five to ten years, I will be an excellent character concept artist as well as an excellent environment concept artist. That is totally possible. Do you understand what I'm getting at? Um, but the the difference is that I'm not top. I'm not, I'm not topsy turvy about it. I'm pretty committed, you know, uh, to character concept art especially. But uh, one thing that I shifted into was teaching. So I did like five to six years of character concept art and then I started teaching and teaching became something that I really, 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 really passionate about. So I did that for like another five to six years. And in, in that same time, right, I'm sorry, like four years of like concept art devotion and then like six years of like teaching. But the thing was, is that those six years was also teaching character concept art. So I was like also accelerating the thing that I even started originally. You understand what I'm getting at? Yeah. <clears throat> and so then um, now I'm really into this game development stuff, and I have been since last year or actually even two years ago, you know, but I've been slowly learning that stuff as I also adjust my life, right? But now that I've gotten myself back in the position where I can learn again, you know, I'm like full throttle back into game dev. You understand me? Yeah. And, uh, and so that is now something that I want to be really good at. I want to be really good at game development, specifically now, like... I was starting in Unreal, and I was even considering moving over to Unity, and I still might, you know? But I found a real love for the software called Play Canvas, and I'm afraid if they don't get enough attention, they might fall under the wayside. So I need to learn core principles, which it would be I need to learn JavaScript, and like actually need to learn how to code. That will allow me to take it somewhere else. I believe Unity has a JavaScript coding application inside of it, meaning I can code with JavaScript in Unity, right? And Unity doesn't seem like it's going to go anywhere. So I'm like focusing on core. And core 
ideas would be in Unity or even Unreal. I already know how to do Unreal. I don't. I feel thousand percent confident in Unreal. You know. So it's not like I don't have any tools that I can fall back on if this shit hits the fan. But my point is, is I'm not afraid of that, right? I'm not like, well, I'm only going to be an Unreal uh, developer, right? No, I'm just going to be a game developer, and whatever tools happen to be the best, I'm going to use. And whatever changes happen, I'll just adjust, you know? And so I'm focusing all my attention on game development and the tools that will allow me to develop quickly and rapidly, right? And that's it. And so I'm spending a lot of my time doing that these days. You know, all my spare time, aside from hanging out with the kiddos and my wife and friends, uh, I am doing what I'm just telling you, you know? And uh, it's, it's focus that I have that I don't think a lot of people appreciate. You know, people try to demonstrate that maybe I'm just a, a talented individual. Uh, no. If I had any talent, I guess my talent would be that um, when I decide to do something, I just stay with it until um, I become super prof proficient at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I know it just takes one day at a time. I, I do what I preach, you know what I mean? I don't just tell you guys silly shit and I'm just like... <laughs> And then just hope that you guys understand. Like, I, I am really clear about what it is that makes me as good as I am at the things that I'm good at. Oh, what the lawnmower? Oh, let me uh, close my window. Hang on a second. That window closing. You gotta put some WD-40 on that. Um, you know, and it's just that that persistence and that um, slowly but surely kind of methodology. Like that game that uh, I think I showed it to you guys, did I not? Like the little kids game? Happy Town? Like, uh, if you guys go click the link again. Yeah, they're actually on my art station. Some of the ones I've done. The StarCraft stuff. Dig deep, bro. Uh, it gets stuck on that little sliver sometimes. I don't know why. Oh, what? Where's the new music? So, basically, this is what I've I made. Right? And you guys should be able to play this or have access to this. But I'm going to actually change the music. See, so, but I made the roads today. Um, next thing is I'm going to make another character. And it's, I want to try to make another character. And I want to try to make this multiplayer. I need to figure out how to make multiplayer. So that's the two tasks that I have to do next. Make a new character. One that my daughter designed. And then um, uh, make it multiplayer so me and my daughter can walk around in this world. There's nothing to do just other than just walk around and looking at stuff. But uh, I was watching her play this Roblox game too, and I was like, there was a really cool part of it that um, I don't like how it like, did this like that. I wonder if there's a way to fix that. I would have to ask the forums. I'm sure they would know. They would have an answer. Um but anyways, well, actually, maybe there's like a, let us see, rendering. Do any of these do anything? No, nope, nothing. I'll have to figure it out some other time. But I did put new music in here, I think. Happy upbeat background. Yeah, that's going to be better. So that country music. So then I can publish this. It's as simple as this. Just added new music. And then I can just go 1.1.4. And then publish now. And then make this the recent build. So now that I click on this, it should be the better music, not the country music. 
found like some royalty fee free happy music just floating on YouTube. Extracted that shit. Oh, adding that mu new music. That's a little bit longer loading time. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, my daughter likes the music too. You guys might not be able to hear it, but I hear it. The doo doo. Booty dance. Oh. If you hold one and you can booty dance, I'll let you guys enjoy. <laughs> anyway. Um, but slowly but surely, right? Oh, yeah. And let, here's a good example. Let's go back. So if you go back and look at my play canvas, you'll see that I have four um, projects, but only two of them have I put public. The other two are private. And these two, as the name implies, is testing grounds. This is I go there and I try shit out. You know? And so I highly encourage, oh, it looks like people still keep on playing this. Maybe I should keep adding more to it. Yeah, maybe I'll add another vignette. We'll see what's up. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to check this one out, I'm not sure if you guys had. I'll put this in the link too. Anyway. Hopefully you guys get us get what I'm putting down. And so I just slowly but surely am going to be better at it. And so stay stay laser focused. Okay? That's kind of my biggest advice to you, but it's like if you have a hard time deciding, I get it. There's a lot of like there's a lot of attraction to doing both. But you have to understand that, that I call that a positive uh, positive procrastination because it distracts you in a positive way because it seems like it's not a matter of like you don't want to do the work but it's a matter of you're not even getting started you know like you're just really having a hard time staying put and that staggers your growth does it make sense I think yeah, it's like analysis paralysis is another name for it, where you overthink things too much and then you don't do you don't you're never too committed and you're always thinking, what if I could have done that other thing though? Like I we all do it. So don't think that you're the only one. Like everybody does that. But the difference is like between like Einstein and all the other scientists is that Einstein stuck with the theory of relativity like his whole life, like that was his life's long goal, you know, to prove that that was a thing. Like he, he still continuously tried to demonstrate it throughout most of his life and he spent and devoted the rest of his life to like physics and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you think of like, uh, some of the best people, um, like think about like Stephen Hawking, like he is like, he only does like that thing, you know what I mean? And that's why he's like the best in the world. Like, it's not like he does that, but then also on the side, he's like an, an amazing golfer or something, <laughs> you know? He's like, no, he's, he's, that's what he does. I'll take on one more question and I'll let you guys go. No more question. All right. Well, I appreciate you guys. Uh, hope you guys had a good class. Um, like I said, this is like the home stretch. So try to push your work as best you possibly can by next class. And it'll be the last week, y'all. All right. Now, I will tell you guys that my wife is super pregnant, meaning that the baby can come at any moment. And if the baby happens to come during the next week for whatever reason, be prepared for that. I, I put a week off just in case that could happen, meaning if we have to move to the following week, we'll have to do that because I have to at least be there for the few, few days, pretty committed. But once we bring the baby home, then it's a lot easier to, 
to get back to what I was doing before. And plus, I don't I only work part time, meaning that like the baby is not going to be taking all of my time. I have my laptop, so if I have to leave the house for a few hours just to do my class, it'd be totally possible. But I have to be around for like at least the first week with my wife as she recovers. But uh, business as usual right after. <laughs> I hope your baby does come so I can paint more. All right. Uh, I'm hoping it comes after, after class, so that way I can not stress. But anywho, um, all right. I'm going to stop painting and stop talking. Peace out, friends. You guys have a great weekend. Talk to you guys real soon. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.